Okay, hi, I'm Pascal Serranos from Passer VR, and today I'm going to show you Instant VR 3.5 in combination with Unity 5.4. Finally, Unity 5.4 has been released, and one of the major improvements is, of course, the native HTC 5 uh, support which enables my package to support Rift and Oculus uh, and uh, Vive uh, in one go, which I'm going to show you in this video today. So um, I will start with the basic Make Human VR uh, avatar, which uh, will support, uh, of course, Oculus Rift CV1. The DK2, which I'm going to use today, because I will explain why and HTC 5. Um, so before we are going to use that uh, we need to do some settings because out of the box it will just use um, a mouse keyboard input and uh, so what do we need to do to ensure everything is working well. First we have to go to the build settings and make sure the architecture is set on uh, the 64-bit version. Uh, I had just previously in a previous take a problem with uh, Steam VR tracking not working on uh, the, uh, the standard 32-bit. So make sure that you're on 64-bit support uh, in your build. Next one is we need to enable the virtual reality player settings. And normally when you start it up it will just start up with no virtual reality support. You can enable it just like in Unity 5.3 by clicking this one, but then a new dialog will open which lists actually the SDKs you are going to support. By default it's only OpenVR, uh, but in my case I usually add the Oculus Rift to that. And I will put that on top and I will explain why. Now, I have both DK2 and Vive connected to my computer, so which one he is going to use is determined by the ordering of SDKs in this list. So it will see the Oculus Rift first, and then uh, start. if that isn't present, it will start to look for HCC5. Um, now, DK2 has the nifty on-off button on top of it. So actually what I, do, what I do, when I run it like this, it will use the Oculus Rift. Then I can switch it off and then actually the Oculus Rift is not available anymore and it will go to the HTC 5, which I will show you. So uh, the settings are in place now. Still have the same avatar control basic one and I start it. And now you can already see that DK2 is tracking and HTC 5 is not tracking at all as you can see so now I will stop the playing disable Oculus Rift I will get the warning because it cannot find it anymore but that's exactly what I want and when I press play now you will see that HTC 5 is going to do and Yes. What you noticed is that actually uh, it didn't directly track the HTC5 correctly because it has uh, a detection of um, player height inside of it. So in the dialog in the console you can see already neck height uh, messages and actually it measures your, uh, your position when you're actually standing still looking forward and then it will make sure that everything in the uh, avatar uh, is right. That's a new feature of 3.5 which improves the tracking of all body movements. But it needs to measure your height and you can do that by standing still look forward for a, minute, uh, for a second or two and then it will uh, determine your actually neck neck height and use that for uh, its um, calculations. So that's why it didn't track well at first because actually I had the HTC5 on my desk and that's a, a stable position too and it detected at the neck height at table height which 
it just did again because it's now uh, on one meter. So that you should take into account. Also true for Oculus Rift. Okay, so this is basic head tracking which is available in the free version, advanced version and edge version of uh, Instant VR. So, but we also have, of course, the uh, Steam controllers, Steam VR controllers, I should say. These are only supported in the advanced and edge version because it needs hand tracking options which are available in those packages. Uh, additionally, when you want to have uh, Steam controller tracking, you need to use a different avatar, uh, 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 a, di a different prefab because this one is just doing head tracking. So in the instant VR, prefabs folder you see a, a big list of um, prefabs and a lot of them start with MHVR which will mean that it's using uh, the uh, Unity built-in uh, tracking supporting Oculus Rift, Vive and uh, Gear VR but I'm not going to show you that today and you can see that it's in combination with a lot of devices. Uh, the Razer Hydra, still there, still one of my favorites. Uh, Kinect, Leap, Leap and Kinect. And there's a new one, the VR, Steam VR, which is actually supporting the Steam VR controllers. So we're going to use that instead of the default tracking. And now you can also see it has the Steam VR controller script. And when I press play now, and it starts tracking. Yes, there we are. Ha, most comfortable position, well, mo most convenient position. And then you see the hands are actually tracked by the controllers. And you can use the triggers or the grips to move your fingers. Actually, the way the fingers are moved is determined by script and I want to show you this script because it's basically meant to be uh, altered for all kinds of uh, purposes so we have all kinds of strips and wh what I'm going to look at is the input handler script which is actually the script which reads in the inputs of all, all kinds of devices and then uh, uh, does the, the control of uh, various, various things, but I'm going to look at the finger movements this uh, this time. So I need to open the scripts. Edit script. And I will move it a bit to the right so that you can see it instead of my head. Okay, so that's the input handler script. And what I'm going to look at is the update loop because that is actually doing the work for us. And we see all kinds of things for uh, walking around but I'm going to concentrate on uh, the finger tracking because finger movements are here um, done using uh, the controller input. And a controller can be any kind of normal controller Razer Hydra or Steam VR controllers, and actually the script is now uh, set up like this: that the thumb, the middle finger, ring finger, and little finger are moved when actually the trigger of the, in this case, left hand, well, this one, is pulled, or the bumper, the side bumper, has been pushed. Uh, the index is only controlled by the bumper uh, by the bumper I should say and that's a bit confusing I I, I know so uh, I said it wrong the bumper in case of the steam VR is this one which we usually call the trigger and that's because it matches actually this bumper on an Xbox controller you hold this one and then you can use the other fingers for the grip controller or the trigger on the Xbox controller. So that's why on the Steam controller this one is called the bumper and this one is called the trigger. It's confusing, I know, maybe I'm going to change it in the future but that's the situation right now. So if you want to change that you just change these lines in the script. Shouldn't be too hard uh, for you. 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, because you probably noticed that I also have the Leap Motion uh, attached to, uh, to the HTC5. Also can be mounted on DK2, of course. Um, what do we want what to do uh, when we are, want to have Leap support? Well, actually, the basic thing is just like uh, with the Steam controllers. You look for the prefab, which says VR Leap. And this one will use uh, will support Oculus with Leap or Vive with Leap, which I'm going to show you. It's the most convenient way is to put it on my head again, and then you can see that the hands are tracked by, uh, with uh, the Leap. So, uh, well, you can play around with different combinations with Kinect on Steam controllers. Uh, I'm very excited about this update in uh, Unity and uh, my package and I'm looking forward to your uh, responses to it. So uh, have fun with it and uh, maybe we'll see each other in the next time. Bye.